with good YouTube, SanZ3 here, finally back to do another video. Um, now, of course, it's been a while since I uploaded a video, and I probably should have told you guys why. Um, to keep it short, uh, I just caught up, and I just, I'm, I'm currently, and the reason that I sort of took a hiatus from YouTube is because I was caught up in some bullshit in my real life, so I'm just still dealing with that at the moment. So, I can't promise a consistent release of videos even after I make this, um, but I'll try my best. But, I want to review the Battle of God's dub, um, <clears throat> because I finally got to watch it, and, uh, pretty much, I'll give it to you guys, I'll, my, my general consensus is, is that it was, it, it was probably Funimation's best, uh, attempt at dubbing Dragon Ball Z ever. Um, probably even more than the show, I would say. Probably even more than Kai, specifically, I'd say. Um, so, I did I did a review for the movie when it first came out in Japanese on my, on, in a live stream, right? And I guess in comparison with the dub, in comparison to that sub, because, he, he, because you know, the sub version we saw, like, I, in my opinion, it would... I don't think it was the best um, subbed movie out there uh, because of how the fan subbers like translated the subs. They called Beerus Bills, which is not his name; it just isn't. Um, but gen I, 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 I'm gonna lean and say I'm gonna lean towards the dub being better, at least for this movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked, right? Um, because you know, every, anyone that's known me, you know, or at least anyone in the community that's known me has always pretty much guessed that I am a very big supporter of uh, what the fuck. I've always been a very big supporter of um, Masako Nozawa as Goku. Sorry, my charger. One, one second. Sorry, I'm this is my, okay. Some bullshit's going on with my charger at the moment. Um, but yeah, so I've always been the staunchest defender of her, you know, of her performance as Goku because people always say, eh, Goku's not supposed to sound like a child," and basically, all you have to tell them is that Kira Toriyama chose her as the voice. She's been playing the character for thirty years, and she's about to get into the Guinness Book of World Records for playing Goku for over thirty. Uh, for well, now it's thirty years because it's twenty fourteen, but. Um, she's about to, you know, she is going to get in there someday, hopefully, most likely, I would say. Um, so it's not a bad voice, but I think that for this movie, Sean Shemmel outdid her, her in her performance of Goku. Um, for, the, for, for this movie, I think Sean Shemmel definitely did better than, than Masuka Nozawa's Goku. And for that reason alone, I'm going to say that I may prefer the dub for this movie over the sub, right? Um, and the the main things that I that I... You know the the things that caught my attention when it came to the dub, to the dub of this movie was that um, they were going to they were going to be replacing the voices of the narrator in eighteen with their old voice actors for the dub. So Colin Klinkabeer would no longer be playing eighteen; it would be Meredith McCoy, which didn't bother me too much because even I, I know some people prefer Meredith and some people prefer Colleen, but I prefer both. I don't I I, I like both their performances. But uh, Meredith did much better, I think, in this movie than she did in the show because now she has more experience voicing the character from the games and the actual TV show. So now, when she came back to play her in Battle of Gods, that improvement in her voice in her voice acting shows in this movie. But the main thing that I was very um, sort of uh, you know anxious about was the uh, narrator because. Yes, I get it. The, the the narrator for DBZ, at least in Funimation's OG dub, you know, it's it's very nostalgic for viewers. But if you watch the subbed version of Dragon Ball Z and you watch Kai, you will see that the narrator is actually not. It's he. It, the performance is different from Haber's in the sense that Haber's is very he like when he when he narrates, he's like trying to hype you up. But rather with the sub and Kai, you can hear almost like a grandfatherly like voice behind it. It's it's, it's like a you know, it's, it's 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 sort of like that setting where you get like people around like a campfire, and then like the old person is just like telling a story in like a very like soft voice, right? So that's the kind of voice that you want for the narrator, uh, specifically of Dragon Ball Z. So I was very like a little apprehensive when I heard that Kyle Bear would be coming back because I thought he'd be using his hype voice that he used in the show, but I was surprised and very relieved and impressed and 
you know, I, I appreciated it because Kyle Herrera actually didn't go to the hype voice in the beginning of the movie when he was narrating. He went to an almost like grandfatherly like sort of um, uh, tone when he was narrating. So I, I, I was, you know, I was very happy with that. Very reminiscent of Kent Williams' role as the narrator in Yu Yu Hakusho, um, something I just noted. So, I, you know, th those two cast changes weren't, they weren't very, um, they, did, they, did, they didn't change too much for me. Uh, so yeah, I I I I, I, didn't, I didn't mind either of the changes. I, I probably wouldn't have minded. It. I I definitely would not have minded uh, Colin Clinkenbeard as eighteen and Doc Morgan as the narrator still. But um, they did well. Kyle Bear and Meredith McCoy. So I I, I was very, I was very happy. Um, one thing that I noticed though is that when when the intro was playing, I don't know if it was the script. Whoever was, I I don't remember who was writing the script. I don't know if it was J. Michael Tatum or Justin Cook or Chris Abbott or, or whoever, but. Uh, when I watched the sub version of that intro, <clears throat> what happened was uh, there was this line that the narrator, who is Joji Yanami in the sub, he was talking about uh, how like humanity was selfish and stuff. It was you know something like a little philosophical in nature. And I was kind of looking for that uh, portion in the intro, but it wasn't there. But when you get to the end of the movie with Elder Kai and old, or sorry, with old Kai and uh, the Supreme Kai when he's fused with Kabito permanently. Um, that you know that that portion about how human is very forgetful and selfish or something of that nature uh, makes its way into the ending scene for the dub so I was very happy with that and uh, one thing that many people were confused about was uh, that there were some scenes in the theatrical version or of the dub that weren't apparent in the original fan subversion um, you know the Japanese version of the film and the re and I'm gonna explain why so basically Battle of Gods was originally 65 minutes uh, when it was released in theaters in Japan but what happened was that there was an extended version that was played on television later which and in which included um, no 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 sorry it was a minute and 25 or an, an hour and 25 minutes yeah that's what it was but um that, that they they broadcasted in Japan a uh, extended version of the movie with 20 minutes of additional footage and you know these 20 minutes added things like the new intro that you saw in the dubbed version that you didn't see in the fat sub in, in the fan subbed version additional minutes to the relationship between Weiss and Beerus um, the whole rock paper scissors match between Oolong and Beerus was also included in those 20 minutes that you didn't get in the original version so what Funimation did was that it, they didn't take the the, the theatrical version of Battle of Gods in Japan, but they took rather that extended version and then they brought that over to the United States and they dubbed that, which was the right decision to make. Now I haven't seen all of the extended scenes in Japanese, I've only seen the intro and that was pretty, and I, I loved it, but I also loved the dub version for it also, so all in all I was, I was very happy um, with the dub, it's, it's by far to me the, the best dubbed um, in terms of you know, in terms of, the, of of how well like the the voice directing, the voice acting, the script, all that stuff, um, I just think this is the best Dragon Ball Z product that Funimation has put out in terms of those things. Um, I think the 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 script is definitely tighter than it is in Kai. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say I I feel like this is definitely like their 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 best Dragon Ball Z dubbed product, and I was very happy with it. And like I said, it, it it's so good that I that I thought it was better than the subbed version of the movie, specifically because of Sean Shemmel, but uh, every, everyone else did great. Chris Sabat as Vegeta was great, as Piccolo he was great. Yamcha got a little more screen time, which I was kind of happy about, and you know, you see Chris Sabat playing playing him with that with that voice, and you know, it was nice to see that. Um, humor was better, uh, in, in my opinion, because I, I, I feel like they took like some of the Japanese jokes that were in the script of the of that were in the script of the Japanese version of the film, and they they adapted it to, you know, suit American humor. I think th I I want to say that's what they did, um, and I was happy with it. So yeah, all in all, uh, it was I I I very in, I, you know I I really enjoyed the dub. Um, one thing that I noticed though was that uh, Chuck Huber was definitely better as a uh, Emperor Pilaf than he was in Dragon Ball. Um, the voice just sounded a lot more clearer, and I was, you know, I, I like that. I don't know who was playing my, I think, I, I don't think that was Colin Clinkenbeard. That may have been someone else. Uh, can't put my finger on it. But, um, yeah, I, I feel like everyone was just better at actually voicing the character. Uh, Elder Kai's was, I think Elder Kai's voice was definitely sort of an improvement. Um, 
Goku's was definitely improvement. That's probably the best you're going to hear Goku in English, um, this movie, Funimation's dub. Uh, who else do I, who else was notable? Um, Laura Bailey, I think, as Trunks was, that, that, that was kind of notable also. It sounds much better. Uh, Kara Edwards as Goten, of course. Um, as Gotenks, definitely. Um... So yeah, that, that, that's it for all the mainstays. Now for the new additions to the movie, um, very happy with uh, Jason Douglas's Beerus because one thing that you should know about me when it comes to Dragon Ball Z is that when it comes to, to almost all the villains, I prefer the Japanese voices. Um, <clears throat> as, any, as I've said before, Ryusei Nakao as Frieza is, is my favorite voice for the character. Norio Wakamoto, who I think is probably, along with Masako Nozawa, the strongest person, as Goku, the strongest performance in the uh in the show um he, he's just like a god at, at japanese voice acting so I, I i prefer his voice as cell and then um kozo shioya who voices all forms of majin buu if i'm not mistaken um i i i, I yeah I, I pretty much prefer like all the main villains voice in japanese um not that i don't like the english versions the only one that i the the, the voice that i really had a problem with was the og dub frieza Linda Young because Frieza is not supposed to sound like a grandma. Not 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 saying that Linda Young is a bad voice actress. Oh no, have have you heard her again, Kai? That's like oh, it's, it's great, it really is. But I, I I don't think her voice lent itself to Frieza, you know, that character. So when they recasted Frieza as Chris Ayers and Kai, I was uh you know I was pleased with that performance more so than Linda Young's. Though Linda Young did a good job as Frieza in Raging Blast One. Um, the 2009 video game, the first PS3 game, I think, for Dragon Ball Z, besides Burst I, I was Burst Limit on PS3? I don't remember. I don't think it was. Maybe it was. Yeah, yeah, no, actually it was. Yeah, it was on PS3. And then Raging Blast 1 came out in 2009, so her performance as Frieza in that game, I think, was probably her, her best performance as the character, just, ever. Um, her, her performance, I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, so, so the point I'm trying to make is that when it came, when it comes to the villains in Dragon Ball Z, I I like the English dubbed voices, but I almost always prefer the the Japanese voices. And Koichi Yamadera is Beerus, who voices Spike in the Japanese version of a uh, of a uh, um, Bebop. Um, he just did a his, his performance as Beerus in this movie, and the sub version was pretty much perfection. It was it was really good. Um, but Jason Douglas nailed it. He he was. He was great. He was... I, I, I loved it. I really did. Because one of the things that I noticed when I was watching the clips, and if you guys watch Konzenshu podcasts, I think uh, Mike Labrie from, you know, Vegito EX, uh, he, was, he, he was also voicing, like, the same opinions. When he was watching the clips of the dub, because Beerus is a cat, you know, he always, like... There's sort of, like, a lazy sort of, like, feel to his voice. Like, he'll always, like, sigh and... Ugh, you like groan like this because he's a cat, you know. Like he's supposed to be lazy and sort of like fickle, and you know that that sort of like character, right? And I wasn't really getting that from Jason Douglas's performance in the clips, but when you watch the actual movie, then you'll see like, oh, he nailed it. He 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 nailed like that part of like the cat characteristics of Beers the character, and I was I was very happy with that. Um, did did amazing as Beerus. I, I I loved it as much as Koichi Yamadera's performance in Japanese. So uh, yeah, you know Goku and Beerus who are, and Vegeta, who are pretty much the the, the three. Well, and and Whis also, who I'm gonna get into right now. Um, those four are probably like the four main characters, along with Bulma. So that would be five. Um, in the um, in the uh, in the movie, right? So. Whis's voice, uh, Ian Sinclair finally makes it, you know, and he, he's been killing it in 2014. Toriko, Dandy, um, Brooke, and uh, there's and, and, and now Whis, who is the strongest character canon-wise in the series, right? Um, phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Lo loved his performance as Whis. Like, it was, it, it, it was restrained. Like, the voice was restrained, but it was, it, 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 it never hit you over the head with it, right? Like it was never too like overly campy or anything like that. So I was I was I was very happy with his voice and obviously he's showing his voice voice acting talent by voicing the character, um just nailed his voice perfectly. As in Masakazu Morita in Japanese. Um so yeah, overall I was just I was just happy with I was just 
overall very happy with the dub now. Uh, I noticed that there were some changes in the script, but I don't think they really... I don't think it really changed the overall feel of the movie. At least to me, it didn't. Um, like, uh, I, I'm... I probably should have gone back and actually checked this, but um, I believe with the whole pilaf thing and everything, when 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 they were like a focus of the movie, uh, I believe there were some script changes there that I don't remember in the Japanese version. Now, what it actually exactly is, I'd have to go back and check, but that's just my feeling. Um, but I don't I don't think it was too big of a problem, if 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 at all a problem. So, uh, all all in all, this was just a very good dub movie. Um, and also something that I noticed when I was watching the dub for this movie that I pro that I guess I didn't notice when I was watching the sub version was that Gohan was actually more of like a he was spotlighted a lot in this movie because you would hear like Kyle Haber like voice him a lot in the movie like be it like in a background shot or something like there's all I, I just noticed like there was always like a lot of focus on him and I guess it was because of the fact that I was watching the extended version of the movie but I th that, that's just something that like I noticed and that you know I, I'm glad that they uh, did that because Gohan is pretty much the secondary protagonist, if not the dual protagonist of the series, right? At least of the Z portion of the series, where you know where where he actually shows up. <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, and Kyle Bear's Gohan. Oh man, that would, nailed it. It's such such a natural voice for him. Uh, just great. And um, yeah. So all in all, I was just happy with the movie. I really was. Now the problems with the movie. Uh, I mean. If you guys have watched my older review for the movie in Japanese, then they still stick today. Um, or they still stick with this review. I'll just pull them up again. Let me go to uh, my... Okay, let me bring this up. So, of course, I didn't really... I'm still not a fan of the Super Saiyan God ritual. Uh, I didn't really like the pink magenta sort of color that Goku had. Um, Goku being skinnier, I would have preferred for him to be more muscular instead of rather like more like skinnier and, and lighter. Um, he doesn't have to be like Kenshiro muscular. I just want him to be like muscular in general. Like I want him. To, he doesn't have to be like Kaioken, like Saiyan arc muscular, but something along the lines of like the Cell arc or or the Namek arc. I would I would have preferred like you know that sort of like muscle definition on him. Um, the My Boma scene I think is too. I don't know. I'm, I'm still iffy about that scene because I feel like Vegeta's character would not... I mean, yeah, he'd be mad that Bulma is, you know, hit, right? But um, I don't know if he would... I mean, S S you know, when Cell killed Trunks, he erupted in, in rage, right? But I don't know. The the phrase, my Bulma, just seems, I think, a little off-putting for Vegeta. I mean, because he does love Bulma at this point in, 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 his, um, in his life. Because, I, I mean, people tend to forget, like, the whole Majin Vegeta sacrifice, which, you know, Battle Gods is set after the Majin Buu arc, where he goes, like, I do this for you, Bulma, Trunks, and even you, Kakarot. So, you know, he, he does love Bulma, and he does love Trunks. But, um, I don't know, I feel like my Bulma was not the correct line in the to use in the movie. Um, and rage-induced Vegeta being stronger than Goku, I, I would have just made him Super Saiyan 3. I don't think that making him a regular Super Saiyan and then making him stronger than Goku is... I don't think that makes much sense. I would prefer to, to, to uh, be... just make him go Super Saiyan 3 at that moment. Um, and then make him stronger than Goku. Because of that. If that's what Akira Toriyama wanted to do. Uh, I think the movie just needed more action in general, which is what we're going to get, which is what Akira Toriyama promised with the 2015 movie that's coming out. So that's good. Uh... I also, and you know, Go, Gohan, Goten, and Trunks were, I think, more relevant in, in, in the dubbed version because it was the extended version of the movie, so um, that was something that I was happy with, and that was a problem that I had with the fan subbed version that I watched, so that's completely, you know, erased. Um, I would have preferred for the other characters to be more relevant somehow, I don't know, maybe bring back like a former villain and then have them beat up on him or her, whatever. Uh, the base Goku stronger than Frieza statement, I probably would have made that, uh, I probably would have reversed that, I probably would have made base Goku stronger than Frieza somehow. Um, Beerus, I would have liked to see an actual feat of him destroying the solar system or something of that nature, like covering, like his key attack or energy attack, like encompassing the entire solar system, something of that nature. 
and the animation I think was crisper at least when I watched it in, in dub for some reason um, I would have liked less CGI though but I would have liked but that, 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 that animated scene where um, Goku says I won't let you destroy my world and then you know just like uh, flies like through the rocks and then fights Beerus in the air that was very well animated um, and speaking about that line I actually prefer that, that scene in Japanese because I, I don't know the fra like the way Sean Shamel said it. I don't know if it was voice direction or whatever. It just to me it just sounded like a little awkward. Um, that was I think that was like the, really the only one like nitpick that I had with Sean's voice in in this movie. He he generally like I said I I think he outdid Masako Nozawa for this movie. But that was the one thing that was the one scene which I thought was kind of like a nitpick because it was an important scene. It was a hype scene, but it kind of at least to me kind of came out like a little awkward. Whereas when I watch it in Japanese, where Masako Nasawa says, destruction isn't something that you should enjoy, and then she yells like that, um, I, I definitely prefer the Japanese version of that scene. Not the screaming, but the Japanese version of that phrase. <clears throat> so, um, I think that's all I gotta say about the movie, 21 minutes. But, uh, yeah, st still, I rate it an 8 out of 10. I'm probably going to delete my old video because it's just very amateurish looking at back at it now. And, um, hmm. I think that's all i got to say, really. Um, great movie, 8 out of 10 in my opinion. And, uh, if you guys haven't, if you guys loved D Dub DBZ, this, you got to watch this movie. And a lot of people were complaining, like, this isn't DBZ, like, oh, where's, like, the testosterone in the action? Um, the problem is, you have to read the manga, or you have to watch the Japanese version, or you have to watch Kai to really understand Dragon Ball, to see that there is a very light-hearted tone to the series at its core. That's why the movie was the way it was, because that's just the way Toriyama writes Dragon Ball. Um, the OG dub version that you watched on Toonami, and in the season box sets, and all, you know, all those other releases that Funimation has done is not exactly the correct representation of the series. So you, would, the best way to experience Dragon Ball is to read it, in my opinion, and then watch the subbed version. Um, and if you want to watch it in English, watch Kai, because that's a, that's also a very good way to experience it. And um, once you do those things, and then you watch this movie, I think then the people who are complaining about the movie would then say that, oh, okay, now I get, like, why this movie was so lighthearted and why Beerus wanted to destroy the Earth over something as simple as pudding because, well, that's just how Toriyama writes. It's always been a staple of his writing to write, you know, like, whimsical stuff like that. So that's all I got to say to them. And, yeah, 8 out of 10 movie, in my opinion. Definitely the best DBZ movie that I've seen. Um, speaking about DBZ movies, I actually re finished rewatching all of them. And I'll probably talk about it in a, in a, in, a, in um, another video, but uh, I rewatched them all in Japanese compared to, to the dubs, so I'll be um, talking about that in a different video. Um, if you guys want to know what my favorite movie is, it's Tree of Might, uh, and Tullus is my favorite, or Turles as he's called in the dub, is my favorite movie villain, besides Beerus. And um, yeah, that's all. I, that's all I really got to say. A uh, great movie, definitely. I, I think I would prefer the dub for this for, for this specific movie, which I think is a very rare occasion for me because I always say that the dub is equal to the sub, but I've never I don't think I've ever said that the dub for like this particular scene or this particular moment is better than the sub version, except for maybe the OG. Um, actually, no, no, I was gonna say something, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably say no to that too. But yeah, this is I I I, I, I would say that. I think the, the, the best way to watch this movie is definitely dubbed slightly. Slight preference of it over the Japanese version. And, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Um, I can't promise more videos after this, but I'll try. So thank you guys for watching. Peace. And have a nice day. Uh, Sean Chamo for the win. And Jason Douglas.